All right, all right, all right. We're back here at Song of the Day, coming to you from not the Rock Cave. As you can tell by my background, we are in a secret location in the Adirondack Mountains. Oh, dad joke. That's rough. That's rough for this morning. Yep, I don't know about you, but it is a balmy 39 degrees here this morning, lakeside. But it's nice to be somewhere else, right? All right, I'm excited for today's song of the day. Uh, today's a good one, and I think you're going to like it too. I hope you got a lot to say because this is a fabulous record. Today is the 25th anniversary of Alanis Morissette's Jagged Little Pill. I mean, everyone remembers where they were when they were listening to this, when they heard this, or what they were doing. This is a outstanding record. I mean, it's been voted one of the best records in the history of records, right? Uh, it sold somewhere around 35 million copies worldwide. I mean, it was just a complete dominating record. So let's talk about it. Alanis Morissette out of Ottawa, Canada. Did you know this was the, uh, her third studio album? She has two studio albums that were released in Canada only. And it's completely different than anything you ever heard from her since. Those are two described as new jack, swing, dance, pop records. Uh, maybe I'll post one of the videos from there because it's unbelievable just what... I mean, it sounds like 1990 when you do it, but it's dance music. It's pretty crazy. Anyway, she's in high school. She wants to make a move, wants to continue with singing career wants to move to LA but says to herself I can't go from here Ottawa to LA that's too much of a culture shock uh, so she moves to Toronto and does some writing she does a lot of writing she writes like 50 songs but she can't you know find her way as far as writing is concerned because she's trying to figure out what she wants to say but also what people want to hear and there's kind of a uh, disconnect there she does move to LA and she's paired with a producer Glenn Ballard um, they meet and she's 19 years old and they hit it off right away as far as writing is concerned they basically within not a very short time they start writing songs together um they they basically sat down and wrote this album together he added a lot of the lyrics at first but then she took off after that he uh would play the instruments on them except for the drums which was just a computer program and she would play harmonica but their goal was to uh write and record a song a day. They pretty much did that, and they record her vocals late at night. What you hear on that record is pretty much that as far as vocals concerned, and uh, we'll talk about that. So they start shopping around their demo, and nobody want, and there's no takers. None of the big labels want an RCA, everybody. They all pass, Warner Brothers. Nobody is interested at all in an angry, quote, angry female rock-ish uh, musician. They're just not interested. So they're getting frustrated, and finally they get a call from someone who says, hey, Maverick Records wants to give you guys a shot, give it a listen. And, it's, and that's the label founded by Madonna. So they meet with this kid, and when I say kid, they meet with this guy. His name is Guy O'Siri. He'd been working at Maverick Records since he was 17 years old, and now he's like 20 or 21 or however old he is. He's, no, he's not any older than 22 at this point. Meets with them. He doesn't know anything about them. They walk in. He thinks they're a band together. They don't, he doesn't know anything about it. And they basically play perfect for him. And within 30 seconds, he says later that he knew he was going to sign them right away. He wanted, he absolutely wanted to sign them. And then they heard a few more songs and the deal was done. Uh, Alanis Morissette says that basically, you know, because they were close to the same age for the first time, instead of auditioning for like someone in their 50s or 60s, he just got what she was doing. And that's why they got signed. They get to work. Um, they do add some instruments to some of the songs. They, they gently ask them to kind of re-record some of the vocals. They do kind of begrudgingly, but then when they listen, even when the uh, label listens to it, they say they don't like the re-recorded versions. They like the demos better. So all of those vocals that you hear on that record are her demos from those recordings. They're the actual original recordings. Uh, you ought to know is one take. That was it. One take late at night, those vocals stayed the same, even though they added the music afterwards. I mean, that's insane. All these are just one or two takes. Um, so the record comes out, and it debuts at, like, number 117, right? Uh, but then K-Rock starts playing You Ought to Know. Do you guys remember who plays on You Ought to Know, who the musicians are? Uh, yeah, it's Dave Navarro and Flea from Red Hot Chili Peppers. How did that come about? Well, guess what? 
that Guy Osiri is best friends with Anthony Kiedis, and one of his friends hears the song uh, in the demo stage and says, this would be really killer with some awesome bass and guitar. And so they got permission and brought those guys in, and they just nailed that tune. That's pretty crazy, right? Uh, so K-Rock's playing the record. K-Rock says that it is the one of the biggest phone reactions they've ever had in the history of the station. People just went crazy for that song. And this record had a major longevity. It took three months to go to number one. We all remember that summer. It was a worldwide smash. Uh, every country it charted on, it was just insane with those 33 million copies, obviously. It won five Grammys. It won six Juno Awards. It even won a Grammy for her VHS of her live concert of that tour, her very first tour. I mean, that's how big this was. <clears throat> so... And then think about it after that, there was just angry music everywhere that next year, 95. You had The Prodigy with Firestarter, you had Tracy Bonham doing Mother Mother, you had Marilyn Manson. I mean, there was there was a lot going on at that time, but this record was already out. So, what are the track listings on this song, on this album? You got All I Really Want, You Oughta Know, Perfect, Hand in My Pocket, Right Through You, Forgiven, you learn, head over feet, Mary Jane, ironic, not the doctor, and wake up. Ironic, obviously, we all talk about that. There's nothing ironic in that song. It drives a lot of people crazy. It's a great song. It was actually the best-selling song off that whole album, um, but nothing ironic about the things that she says. She did go back and record a very funny but uh, good version with uh, uh, Jimmy Fallon uh, the, with things that were actually ironic some years back. So if you haven't seen that, check it out. Also, for the 10th anniversary of that, uh, in 2005, they put out an acoustic version of the whole album. It was a Starbucks-only release. That caused a little bit of consternation with the record stores in Canada. They boycotted her whole, her whole catalog for the six weeks that that was available only. Um, and I think now you can get a, like just a regular copy of it. But if you have not heard that uh, acoustic version of Jagged Little Pill front to back, you need to play it. It's an amazing record. It is as good as the original. I don't say that very often about unplugged records. Uh, my favorite being Alice in Chains, which is just superb, but this one is excellent. So what am I doing for song of the day today? It's tough. I listened to a lot of them this morning, um, but for me, my favorites on this album are uh, Head Over Feet, You Learn, and today's song of the day is Right Through You. And that's just a great song. I mean, I, you might be surprised at my song of the day, but I just love that song. That's the one I go to gravitate to the most. So crank up your Alanis Morissette today. Tell me about what you were listening to at the time or what you were doing or what your memories are of that record because this is one great record. Enjoy your Saturday and we'll see you on the flip side. <laughs>